Good day, this is Dr. Conrad Miller giving you your Fukushima update for June 17th, 2013. We're in the midst of reviewing about 18 hours of lectures and discussions from the New York City Symposium on Fukushima and the disaster tsunami earthquake that occurred at the power plant there especially. Uh, we're condensing it to about an hour's worth if we can. So let's begin part four today of this discussion. One of the discussions I was really lo looking forward to was the discussion about the oceans and the effect of Fukushima. And Dr. Ken Busler from Woods Hole, the Institute in Massachusetts in Cape Cod, is a research scientist. And he went there, he actually got on a boat in Yokohama in Japan by June of 2011. The accident occurred on March 11th, 2011. And they were studying the effects from up to about 30 miles offshore of the event. Let's just give you a couple of numbers here. A Becquerel is one atomic disintegration per second. And a Peta Becquerel, or a Peta Becquerel, is uh, 10 to the 15th Becquerels. A million is 10 to the 6th, so those are all zeros. So that's a lot, 10 Becquerels. So from the atmosphere, or into the atmosphere, 5 to 30 Peter Becquerels went from Fukushima, and 3 to 15 Peter Becquerels went directly into the Pacific Ocean from his calculations. And the river runoff and underground groundwater it's still going on today, which is difficult to measure. You have to do it especially in rains. He says that more than 80% of the cesium and the other radionuclides that result from fissioning uranium went into the ocean. But there's a large amount of uncertainty about the quantity. Chernobyl contributed about 85 peta becquerels altogether in about 10 to 20 percent of that went into the ocean, about 9 to 17 Peter Becquerels. Now typically you have natural occurring uh, elements that are radioactive, potassium-40 in the ocean, this is in the ocean, potassium-40 and uranium-238 are two of the most plentiful ones, he said. So there, for the uranium-238 there's about 30, 37,000 Peter Becquerels in the ocean. And for potassium-40, which is also radioactive, 15 million Peter Becquerels are in the ocean. And these are the naturally occurring ones. So he can measure down to a, a, one Becquerel in his lab, where he has these very expensive goggle counters to analyze the samples of the um, seawater that he has taken. And normally you get a fingerprint if you have the cesium-137 and the cesium-134. Those are the main things that he was measuring. Uh, the cesium-134 is only two years old and two years half-life. So that had to be released from Fukushima. And the cesium-137 is a 30-year half-life. So that could come from other things like atomic bombs because it takes 10 to 20 hazardous lives for that to get out of the range of detection. He said most of the cesium in the Pacific Ocean comes from weapons testing uh, relative to other radionuclides besides these potassium-40 and uranium-238. A banana has potassium-40, about 12 becquerels. So you'd have to eat, he said, 20 million bananas to get a dose that is concerning radiation-wise. Uh, before Fukushima, the measurement of cesium was 1.5 becquerels per cubic meter of cesium in the ocean, before Fukushima. Now it's running about 1,000 to 10,000 becquerels per cubic meter. And that's uh, above the range where it's acceptable. Um, there was around 50 million becquerels per cubic meter close to the plant in the ocean right after the accident, and that has dropped. 
but there are hot spots in the ocean still found close to the plant. The United States drinking water limit is 8,000 becquerels per cubic meter. So the seas in the ocean, basically today, we showed us a graph, is around 1,000 becquerels per cu cubic meter uh, by the end of 2012. And he calls these levels safe for the marine biota, the animals and plants in the ocean, and human exposure. And the highest levels uh, post-Chernobyl in the ocean were 1,000 becquerels per cubic meter, which were unprecedented high levels. And greater than 10,000 becquerels per cubic meter, you would have reproductive effects on land and mortality, too. Uh, TEPCO, the company that runs the plant, is allowed 90,000 becquerels per cubic meter release into the ocean by their operating license because these levels are considered safe. He talked about the debris. He said it moves faster than the cesium in the ocean because the debris has a little bit of component of being on top of, of the water, so the winds will blow the debris faster than the cesium. The edge of the cesium was detected in March of 2012, about halfway across the Pacific, and should be reaching the Southern California area this summer at 10 becquerels per cubic meter. But we don't know exact levels in between. At a Tokyo symposium in November 2012, they found there was a lot of seepage that was continuing from Fukushima plant, and a lot of the uh, cesium contamination was going to the seafloor. 94 terabecquerels were counted at the seafloor, and off the plant about 15 terabecquerels at the surface. So a terabecquerel is 10 to the 12th, 12 zeros, maybe a million becquerels would be six zeros. So, but they have to do a study after the rain to really can, so, they don't catch, so they can catch the flow. And he said rivers continue to be the source and will be for decades to come of the cesium and also the Daiichi plant, which is leaking at 10 million becquerels per hour of cesium from units one through three. Now, he was not aware of that number when he did his calculations, so they, you have to remember that a little bit. So, uh, he also notes that a lot of the cesium and the other radionuclides are going downward to the bottom of the ocean. That's why the numbers are higher at the bottom, and they're mixing into the clay. The global fallout from testing and so on in 19... 1970, it was about 290 Peter Becquerels, plus or minus 30. As far as bioaccumulation, he said that radioisotopes tend not to stay in the body, well, at least cesium. It only has a biological half-life of 50 days, depending on the water. If you took it out of the ocean and put it into a, a little um, pure body of water, uh, like an aquarium, it would probably take that long, maybe 50, 50 days. Although the half-life of its radioactivity would continue to be 30 years, and has its life 10 to 20 times that. That's 300 to 600 years of hazardous life, and that's why we still worry about it on the land in Europe, and around Chernobyl, and around Fukushima. The Japanese fisheries did a study on bottom-dwelling fish, and there's still above 100 becquerels per kilogram, which is 18% uh, of them. So that's after one year. They were 40% initially. Now they're around 18 to 20% of the fish are above that level, and that is considered uh, unsafe to eat. That would be for whelk, octopus, fish like that. Uh, so he says that means the fisheries in Japan should remain closed. The highest values, he said, were uh, fish in the embayment area around the plant, and they were not just 100, in becquer 100 becquerels per kilogram, but 250,000 becquerels per kilogram in those fish, so you wouldn't want to eat them. Now, Nick Fisher told us in a previous video, the January 17th, 2013 Fukushima update, that he studied those tuna fish that migrated from Japan to San Diego waters, 
All 15 of those fish tested positive for cesium radioactivity at 10 becquerels per kilogram per dry weight, which is only about 3% of the radioactivity of the potassium-40, the naturally occurring radioactivity of the ocean that's in the fish. Then, following Dr. Busseler's lecture, we had a presentation from Marek Niedzela on the differential diagnosis of ultrasonic thyroid lesions in children. Uh, basically, he said that in kids, this is uncommon before puberty, but there was an increase in incidence after Chernobyl, especially in females. So in kids, females under 15, it was more prominent in females, 1.5 to 1 compared to males, 1.5 females to 1 male case. And then between the ages of 15 and 19, it went up to 3 to 1 females to male. And then in adults, 4 to 1 females to male. So that's very important to know. And we'll have a little follow-up on that when Mary Elson talks further about gender effects. And Dr. Helen Caldicott added a few things. She noted that uh, around Fukushima, they are finding increased thyroid lesions, but they're not following them uh, if they're five millimeters or less until two years later when they do another ultrasound. Um, and he said, she said that also uh, cesium and iodine radioactive go to the thyroid. So... Three children have been found with thyroid cancer so far and had thyroidectomies in the uh, Fukushima area. Seven are suspected so far, and it's only two years post-accident. When you didn't see thyroid cancer around Chernobyl much until after five years, so we expect more. She noted that 42% of children in the Chernobyl area 42% have thyroid abnormalities, either nodules or cysts, by ultrasound. And small nodules can be malignant. So these should be followed up meticulously. Okay, we'll stop there. And uh, the next video will follow. This is Dr. Conrad Miller. Your Fukushima update of June 17, 2012. 13, sorry. I'm going to live in the past. I don't have to worry about the future.